Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Exams, right? While I have a disdain for them, they are an important part of learning. Having classes online and nothing else means that exams will be taken online too. And taking exams online kind of discourages students to learn the proper way because it's possible for them to just use their notes or look up the answers online, which can be considered cheating. <laughs> cheating. <laughs> At this point in the series, we've had all seven of our main characters and a couple of the most important secondary characters like Larry and Karen, but there are still a couple of those secondary characters that we have yet to meet. Boating School is the episode where Spongebob fails his boating school exam and Patrick tries to help him pass. Like Naughty Nautical Neighbors, this episode aired on August 7th, 1999 and it introduces Mrs. Puff and her boating school, which aren't as prominent as Mr. Krabs and the Krusty Krab but are crucial to the series and are still popular among fans. Before I cover the actual episode, let's go over a little background of Mrs. Puff's boating school. I've gone over this before, but the concept of Spongebob attending a school was not originally part of the initial pitch of the show. Nickelodeon wanted Spongebob to be a child and have the series be somewhat of an underwater version of Hey Arnold, but the creator Steven Hillenburg wanted Spongebob to be an adult character with childlike behavior. This disagreement almost caused Hillenburg to leave the network before they came to a compromise. This compromise ended up being Spongebob attending a school, and this led to the creation of Boating School and Mrs. Puff. Hillenburg was also pleased with this compromise because he loved the character of Mrs. Puff. As Hillenburg also had limits and rules for the show, he added Spongebob not obtaining his boating license to that list. Of course, Spongebob finally earning his license would render the whole boating school aspect of the show worthless, but he also loved the dynamic between Spongebob and Mrs. Puff, and this would be non-existent as well if Spongebob got his license. He eventually saw this compromise as a positive thing because it created another great part of the series that he otherwise would have never thought of himself. The boating school itself has become semi-frequent in the series and does get some focus in every season of the show, so it's important that this episode introduces that part of the series well. We would also be seeing Spongebob constantly failing his boating exam and the actual dynamic of Spongebob and Mrs. Puff, which is also vital to the lore of the show. Lore? <laughs> That's funny. Spongebob has no continuity. We also hear the famous, MY LEG, running gag of the series for the first time in this episode, which everybody loves hearing. This is off topic, but I wanted to mention it anyway, since I love it just like everybody else does. With all of that out of the way, let's rewatch this episode and see how well Mrs. Puff and her boating school were introduced. So the episode starts up, and the intro is very similar to Help Wanted. They both have the same title card music, the music in the first scene where the camera zooms in on Spongebob's house is the same as well. Spongebob's alarm clock wakes him up and Spongebob says today is an important day for him. Except this time the important thing about today is that today's the day of his boating exam. Wow, everybody needs to be as excited as Spongebob when they have exams to take. Spongebob rides his unicycle to boating school, but not before telling Squidward that he's ready to pass his boating test. When he rides down, we see Mrs. Puff's boating school for the first time, and the aerial shot of it is great. Spongebob throws his unicycle in the dumpster because he doesn't think he'll need it anymore, and proceeds to run excitedly to the school to take his exam. Mrs. Puff sees him, and we start to get a glimpse of how she doesn't like when Spongebob takes his boating test. It starts off with an oral exam and some general questions about the boat, like front, back, right, left in 1924. 1924 is the answer everybody gives on a history exam when a question involves a year in which a historical event occurs whenever they don't know the true answer. After Spongebob passes that portion of the exam, Mrs. Puff prepares for collisions and Spongebob enters the boat and we start to see that he gets very nervous whenever he gets behind the wheel. He doesn't know how to actually drive the boat and he always floors it which leads to a crash and Mrs. Puff inflating. Oh, there it is! The My Leg Gag! And it only took nine episodes! Later that night, Spongebob is tired of failing his boating exam. Gary tries to get Spongebob to leave his bed, but he doesn't want to. Patrick radios Spongebob out of bed and leads him to a surprise at his closet in the form of none other than Patrick's Squarepants. It doesn't work, and Spongebob tells Patrick of how he can't pass his boating exam, even after 37, uh, I mean 38 times. Spongebob says he needs to try to think straight, so Patrick says he can take care of all the thinking for Spongebob. He puts Spongebob's walkie-talkie in his head and speaks into it, and they put a hat over it to cover it. This way, Patrick can tell Spongebob all the answers while Spongebob is taking the exam. 
The next day, Spongebob is at boating school and Patrick is preparing to help Spongebob take the exam. After checking that Spongebob has an apple and his lucky underwear, he is confident Spongebob will pass. Just then, Mrs. Puff is dropped off by an ambulance and Spongebob gives her the apple. As Mrs. Puff asks Spongebob questions, Patrick tells him what to do and Mrs. Puff slowly becomes impressed and Spongebob is about to floor it again, but Patrick stops him and tells him to gently step on the gas. They start driving along smoothly and come to a turn when they approach a wall blatantly labeled wall. It's good to clarify though. I decided to label this tree as a tree so nobody thinks it's a weed. Patrick tells Spongebob how to turn and Mrs. Puff continues to be surprised in a good way. It then leads to a montage of Spongebob driving around the boating school with Patrick telling him what to do. Patrick reads Spongebob's diary and Spongebob drives over a giant bump, a flaming hoop, and upside down. What kind of boating school does Mrs. Puff run? After the montage is over, Spongebob approaches the finish line and Mrs. Puff is astounded by Spongebob's improvement and starts to joke about Spongebob having a radio in his head and a guy from miles away is giving him all the answers. Wow, those must be some stellar radios. The walkie talkies I had as a kid wouldn't work if I was at school and my parents were at work. Mrs. Puff says that doing all that would be cheating and while Patrick laughs harder than ever, Spongebob is petrified at this realization. He then admits to Mrs. Puff that everything she just said was true and that he was cheating and Patrick ran home crying. Spongebob let go of the wheel and the boat started driving in various directions away from the finish line. Mrs. Puff tried to get Spongebob to retain control of the boat, but to no avail, and they crashed again. No surprise there. Later on, Mrs. Puff gets taken to the hospital again. Spongebob is sorry for letting Mrs. Puff down again and vows to try harder next semester. As the ambulance leaves, Spongebob realizes he doesn't have his unicycle. But luckily, Gary found it and Spongebob is happy. He and Gary decide to ride down to pay Mrs. Puff a visit at the hospital, and the episode ends. So that was Boating School, and as this is the episode that introduces Mrs. Puff, the Boating School, and how Spongebob struggles to pass his boating exam, I have to say that this episode was an awesome introduction to this part of the show. The dynamic between Spongebob and Mrs. Puff is really memorable, and Spongebob's habit of flooring the gas pedal is always funny. This may have been introduced 9 episodes down the line, but I'd say that the boating school still feels like a natural aspect of the series. In other words, it doesn't feel like this was forced into the show. Even though it came as a compromise between Steven Hillenburg and Nickelodeon, it still fits into the show well and it feels like it could have been in the Spongebob pitch bible all along. It's also season 1, which is the season where the series is introduced to the world, and even if that show only lasts for the one season, it's still important to know the most vital aspects of the show. Mrs. Puff is also a very likable character. Sometimes I feel bad for her considering how incorrigible Spongebob is, but I guess that's part of the appeal. Of course, her inflating is definitely funny, and so is her occasional deep voice. The deep voice doesn't always occur when she inflates, but it's always entertaining. She was set up here very well and I always like seeing her in the future and witnessing her banter with Spongebob. This episode is also funny with so many other moments other than just the floor it and my leg! I also love Patrick constantly yelling TESTING into the radio, Spongebob acting like a cow, the 37, meow, 38 moments, and especially Patrick guffawing when Spongebob realizes he's been cheating. I also appreciate how it addresses cheating is wrong. I may not have passed my driving exam first try, but I never tried doing anything immoral to pass. I took that exam the right way. And look at me now. Sometimes I wonder how he can be this unteachable, but I now understand why. This episode establishes a great character, a good location, which people love, and these don't deviate from the wackiness of the series, which is important. And this added another great layer to the show, which makes it even better. Of course, not every Boating School episode has been great, but this episode introduces it in a really strong and funny way, and that's what matters most. Boating School is a great episode, and while we may not see the Boating School as often as the Krusty Krab or SpongeBob's house, it's still a really fun part of the series. And while it's pretty funny, it also teaches that kids should learn properly and that cheating can have consequences. So going back to what I said about taking tests earlier, here's a message for all you exam takers in the world out there. Take exams normally and don't cheat!